Greetings. Thank you for joining this new Adventures in Sound Art talk that accompanies my installation from The Edge, which is currently running at the NASA North Media Arts Center in South River, Ontario. It's my pleasure to present this work, and I would like to thank Darren Copeland and Nadine Thierro Copeland for the invite to do so. So just a little bit about myself. I'm originally from The Rock, which is common slang for the island of Newfoundland. It's located on the most easterly point of North America, and it has acquired this nickname as it comprises some of the oldest rock formations found on Earth. In parts, it is a windswept barren landscape consisting of ancient spindly spruce trees that grow horizontally around the ground in order to survive. As a creative practitioner, I've explored many fields of artistic practice in the fine arts, opera singing, film scoring, acoustic electroacoustic composition, and multimedia installation arts. For this talk, I'll give a descriptive account of a number of collaborations that have resulted in a series of nonlinear audiovisual installations. These works explore the relationship of environment, material, and process, and are derived from an intensive data gathering procedure and immersion within the respective environments. And along the way, I will weave some of the thinking companions I've been drawn to, all of whom are involved in recent critical, theoretical, and philosophical discourses revolved around the subject of human and non-human agency, generally referred to now as the non-human turn. And each thinking companion, through their unique voice, provided alternative vocabularies to broaden and articulate the creative openings that I'm endeavoring to explore in these works and have led to my recontextualizing the creative process and the resulting artifacts as an ecologically performative act. Here, the resulting artifacts are considered as a responsive embodiment of larger structures of phenomena. The notion of creativity then shifts from an anthropocentric understanding to a performative ontology where their interactions between people, places, and things constitutes a dynamic mode of artistic practice. Moreover, creating these works with different elements from the environment, which become triggering agents, led to my contemplating such apparatuses as co-creative and performative devices. Beyond technical considerations, these ideas introduce a way of thinking and being in artistic practice that, as described by Manning and Mizumi, is an environmental mode of awareness, the making felt of a co-compositional force that does not yet seek to distinguish between human and non-human, subject and object, emphasizing instead an immediacy of mutual action and associated milieu in their emergent relations. Given the context in which I work, making and thinking with co-creative and emergent relations open a pathway to consider the performative aspects at work in the practice and in the situated encounters experienced in the field. In the case of Piano at the End of a Poison Stream, this work emerged from material collected in Southern California at Bombay Beach located at the Salton Sea. For my part, I had no programmatic structure as to what I would record or what work would emerge from the collected material and in essence elicited a process of emergence as a creative technique for being in the different environments. The Salton Sea is an inland body of water which was formed in the early 20th century when the Colorado River breached its banks and flowed for two consecutive years into the Salton Sink. During the 1950s and 60s, Bombay Beach became a prosperous resort town. However, with no drainage outlet, the inflow of industrial pollutants and untreated sewage increased the lake's salinity and caused the water to deoxygenate, so that by the 70s the Salton Sea's ecosystem had deteriorated. The indexical signs of the human and non-human now litter Bombay Beach, which has been described as the most depressing place in California. Once Andrew and I had adjusted to the initial shock of this environment, we proceeded to record these indexical signs. Denton finds himself visually drawn to the monotonous awe of water reflections and birds in flight. For my part, I became transfixed with the numerous objects scattered throughout this landscape, rusty metal objects sticking out of the ground, wooden refuse from dilap dilapidated buildings, sections of concrete slab, plastic bags entangled and flapping in dead bushes, 
dead fish and bird bones, and a lone, broken piano. It was during this real recording that I wanted to find a way to contextualize this calling capacity of things, of being lured to record such objects. Why am I standing in this place compelled to record the sound of these objects? Which led me to Jan Bennett's theory of thing power. Bennett's thing power recasts everyday inert objects into active and vibrant material. In so doing, Bennett breaks with the subject and object dichotomy by giving agency to the energetic vitality intrinsic to matter and the active, earthy, and complex entanglements of human and non-human encounters. It's important to note that Bennett's brand of materialism does not infuse spirit, soul, or God into the object, nor does my practice. Her goal, instead, is to acknowledge and give greater recognition to the effective and agential capacity of natural and artifactual things as an attempt to tune the human body for rendering it more susceptible to the frequencies of material agency inside and around us. Bennett's development of thing power from her own chance encounter with an assemblage of objects resonates with my chance encounter with the objects found at Bombay Beach. As Bennett says, Thing power gestures towards the strange ability of ordinary human-made items to exceed their status as objects and to manifest traces of independence constituting the outside of our own experience. Thus the objects found at Bombay Beach had a certain effectivity of their own, which motivated me to record them.
Moving forward to my most recent nonlinear audiovisual installations, Currents and From the Edge, both works evolved out of a field recording project on the east coast of Newfoundland, Canada. This research occurred when I was invited by Dr. Ellen Waterman to do postdoctoral research at Memorial University with the International Institute for Critical Studies in Improvisation. In the case of Currents, the fundamental question that informed the initial creative process was the simple question, what is here? Two constant elements in this environment are the wind and the ocean. Initially, I was interested to live stream wind and ocean data from this area. For the wind, I achieved this by data scraping a number of personal weather stations located along the Avalon Peninsula of Newfoundland, of which there are many. Working in Max MSP, the system is coded to extract off of these personal weather stations the weather conditions, which are then transcoded to trigger a variety of musical instruments. For the ocean data, I was fortunate to work with Dr. Maxine Jeffrey, who is a leading researcher at the Marine Institute of Newfoundland. Jeffrey has collected ocean data sets for some time and supplied me with a large number of echographs. These echographs show the movement of marine bodies over a certain course of time. Using the program Yannix, these graphs were sonified as MIDI triggering devices and in this case were routed to a rolling marimba sample instrument. Additionally for currents, I also wanted to have a way for gallery visitors to influence the work. So, using a pulse sensor, all elements of the installation are triggered by a gallery visitor's heart rate that, in turn, generates a backdrop of animated water droplets and also is connected to its own instrument. The video images captured by Shannon Harris on our field recording trip are projected onto four relief panels and randomly triggered after 40 beats of the heart occur. In total, there are 160 videos. Combined with the sonification of live wind data, ocean data sets, and pre-recorded musical improvisations, a multi-temporal experience is realized. During the making of Currents, I considered other ways to use ocean data off the east coast of Newfoundland. I began a larger collaboration with the Marine Institute of Newfoundland as well as Parks Canada to build a public engagement artwork that would stream the ocean data off the St. John's Buoy. The resulting work, From the Edge, premiered in September 2019 at the St. John's Whole Fast Festival and is coded to live stream the data currently available off the St. John's Boy, 
which includes wind, surface, wave, and current information. These data sets are transcoded to change various parameters of a visual particle system, which continuously evolves as the data sets update.